Today I'm going to show you how to take leaf cuttings from sundews. This is probably the easiest process you can do. It only takes a few minutes. Um, today I'm going to use for my example plants are Drosera grima galensis, Drosera finis namibia, and Drosera calenciae fairyland. And these are all very easy plants to take leaf cuttings from. Um, you can use pretty much almost all um, South American sundews except for Drosera meristocalis, um, and pretty much all South African sundews, from what I know so far, are able to be propagated via leaf cuttings. Um, so supplies you'll need today are a pair of narrow scissors. Um, you want a pair like this so that you won't disturb the plant too much when you're cutting um, the leaf off. Um, you want a container, preferably clear, and um, something that can be manageable for putting on a shelf like underneath your lights um, that won't fall off too easily. Um, you can use a cheap method of this, which is taking a clear plastic cup and sealing it with saran wrap at the top when you're done. Um, so, I guess we'll get to the examples here. We'll start off with Drosera grama galensis. Now when you're taking a leaf off of the plant, um, obviously the newer leaves are towards the center of the plant, and these are going to generate the most plantlets um, out of all the leaves that you're, you can possibly cut off of here. But if you don't want to, if you're like me and don't want to ruin your nice looking plant, um, you can take an older leaf and it will still regenerate a decent amount of plants for you. Um, I'm going to take this guy here, he looks kind of fried. Um, but I've taken plenty of old leaves off of the plant and they just regenerate plenty of plantlets. So, so when you're doing this you can just cut gently, um, preferably just the leaf you're trying to cut. So it's kind of tedious, but um, there you go. Um, and as you can see, it's not the entire leaf. I just cut probably three-fourths of it off. But you can honestly use just half of a leaf, and it'll still get the job done. Um, a whole leaf is probably best if your plant is younger, because um, you want as much tissue as possible to regenerate the most plantlets here. So what you want to do is put the leaf facing upward into the water and you want to partially submerge it so that the um, leaf doesn't desiccate not that it will and when it's floating in water but I think they might last just a bit longer when you float them or push them under rather than floating them on the surface um, for another example here we can do I think there's so for Drosera finis namibia um, we'll just take an older leaf here as our example and these are probably the easiest you can possibly do because they have long petioles. There we go. It's getting away from me. So, um, in this leaf, you can see that there are a few um, in food particles. I may have had an old beta bite fish food pellet on here. Um, so you want to remove all the food that you can possibly get off of the leaf to prevent mold growing in your um, leaf cutting container. Um, I may have to use my hands on this one, but um, if you have any um, food or any insects in there, they'll pretty much, you'll have to change the water a lot. And with leaf cuttings, honestly, what you want to do is minimize your workload all, as much as you can, whenever you can. Because, um, honestly, I've put some of these guys under the lights for months and not even worried about them. And that is the ideal case that you want, just to not even have to worry about them. So, as you can see, that's upside down, so it doesn't really matter if they're upside down, but it helps if they're facing upward, because that's where the plants are regenerated, is right where the tentacles are, and pointing upward. Um, if, if it's upside down, they, they find their way up, but they have to travel a little further, and it wastes a bit more energy than is necessary. The last example is Drosera Valencia Fairyland, and um, this is another easy one. Um, to get into because for the most part there's a nice petiole on this one. I'm going to take an older leaf, probably at the bottom here. Um, I don't want to disturb too many of the newer ones. So if you can get under there, it's kind of a tedious process sometimes, but not a big deal at all. So there you go. Um, cut that off, come on. There we go. So then you can just take that and put it down there with the rest of your leaves. Or leaves, I should say. Alright. 
So that's basically it. Then what you do is you take your top and you can just put that on there or seal it with the saran wrap, whatever you're doing. And you want to place these as close to the lights as, on, uh, as possible without overheating them. I've set up a little post office mailbox, whatever, um, mailing box from Priority Mail um, that will put my plants with or leaf cuttings within a decent amount of um, distance under my lights. While, I, while they won't get overheated, I want them as close as possible. Um, my lights are up right now. I'd put them down to give you a better example, but I just had to um, have them up for this demonstration so you can see what I was doing under there. Um, basically, the idea here is you don't want your um, plants plantless to overheat during this time. So just make sure that they're probably, you know, two to three inches under the lights so that they um, are far enough away where they're not going to get overheated in this container. Um, the heat can kind of build up. That's another reason I don't do this on the windowsill. Um, if you have an east-facing windowsill, that's great because um, not too much sun will get through. But um, the reason I do it under lights is that um, it seems to be the fastest method for propagating these guys. I can get pretty decent sized leaf uh, buds forming in at least two weeks. Um, the thing about the temperature is, with Drosura gurumagulensis, I can normally get plantlets from this guy in about two to three weeks if, if it's under nice conditions. Um, ideally when you're putting these leaf cuttings under the lights, you want them in the same environment that the mother plant is growing um, because you know it, they're going to be successful there. If they look nice now, you can imagine that the um, plantlets will look nice when they're um, ready to sprout up. And so, um, but with this guy, I had him when it was in 95 degrees um, in my dorm room. I had these guys, uh, it took about a month, maybe two months total, in order to regenerate a, just a small plant, plantlet. Um, and once I got them in a cooler temperature, they just took off. So, temperature does play a role, and you also want kind of a temperature drop for these guys, um, especially the South American sundews, because um, it promotes faster growth. Here's an example of a few that I've done of Drosura finis Namibia from a little while ago. You can't really see them. Um, these are about from uh, two months ago. They've been hardened off and they are ready to be fed. Um, you can see my next video, I, I give a demonstration of that. Um, and here's a Drosura Ivan's Paddle, which is the by far the easiest sundew to take leaf cuttings from. You can uh, you can see leaves uh, the buds forming with almost within a week. It's pretty fast. Um, and I guess that's pretty much it. Uh, if you have any questions, be free, just definitely let me know. Um, I'm going to have a few other videos posted, like I mentioned, about this process, just giving you guys a little better explanation if you're just trying to learn this for the first time. So thanks for watching, and good luck with your propagation success. Hope this helped, and I will see you around online, hopefully. Um, so I'll talk to you later.